Let's rock and roll, boys. Hey everyone, and welcome to another Nintendo podcast, episode 41. Wow. I know, it's been a lot. I'm here with Austin Cummings. Hi, Matt. And that's it, just the two of us. Mm -hmm. uh, OG podcast today, and we're going to talk about Nintendo Switch Lite. The Nintendo Switch Lite. The light switch. <laughs> One of those things. I keep things. wanting to call it that Switch Mini. For whatever reason, I'm stuck on that name. Who even oh, knows yeah. why? There's no real It took me about for a it. year to, to get Revolution out of my head, and then later mm -hmm. to get, uh, what was the Switch uh, code named? Uh, uh, well, <laughs> that was the NX, and I'm basically back on NX. Dolphin oh for God. the GameCube. So, um, uh, no, I hear you. Uh, for whatever reason, even this name is very simple. N Nintendo Switch Lite, or I guess, given the grand tradition of crazy Nintendo console names, that this comes off as simple. Um, but for whatever reason, I'm having I'm having trouble getting it to stick a little. But I'm excited about it nonetheless. So let's talk about it. Yeah, especially I mean, coming from the 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 ds light days it's still still weird to say it um also what was it? just a little bit of trivia the wii u was the cafe was that what it was no project cafe yeah project and cafe. there was a wii mini so maybe that there was a skew of the wii mini which is the mm -hmm. one that did not have um that was released towards the end and it was did not have the backwards compatibility with the gamecube stuff and it was like the had the red outline on the box it was kind of neat but i've never actually seen one in the wild but yeah switch light obviously evocative of the uh nintendo ds light but we've gotten so we feel so far removed from that now as it's been you know 15 years or what have you since that handheld came out we've had so many new nintendo ds 3ds xls and 2ds xls and things of that nature that it feels like a very basic name but you know that's uh, we'll talk a little bit about that so matt why don't you start us off by telling us just kind of the straight news on this thing what can we expect Yeah, absolutely. A few days ago, um, as of this recording, whenever you're listening to this, yep. uh, this Nintendo Switch Lite probably was announced a long time ago. <laughs> um, anyway, so it was kind of a surprise. It was pretty early in the morning. We got an official video from Nintendo, um, which detailed all the information about the mm -hmm. um, Nintendo Switch Lite, which is coming in three colors. Uh, mm -hmm. But we'll just kind of go down the list. First of all, it is a... Uh, $200 machine with a 5.5 inch screen. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to have the same Tegra chip. Uh, it's going to have the same amount of RAM, internal storage, uh, micro SD. All of that's going to be similar, except this thing has no detachable Joy Cons. Right. Um, it is, uh, everything is completely integrated into the system. Mm -hmm. You cannot dock it, unfortunately. There is no TV mode, so right. it, it can't actually turn into something else. It is literally right. just the. Right. Uh, a main handheld device with what they what they call 30 percent better battery life um they're saying seven hours it's starting and... to sound more and more like 30 minutes like barely <laughs> better at all <laughs> right but i did love it when koizumi in the nintendo direct when he just like here's a tv but i'm just walking right by it. he basically just dunks on that poor tv <laughs> walks out of there he's like this switch light has nothing to do with this old antiquated technology you referred to as a television set and he just keeps on walking i thought it was uh, Matt, you and I talked a little bit off recording yeah. how they really seem to try to go for as clear a branding as possible. I remember when the Wii U came out, because uh, the Wii had been such a phenomenon, uh, that I believe it was Michelle Obama, uh, former first lady, who was asked uh, about like the Wii U or if it was on, like, on their Christmas list. It was like uh, about the time mm. that it was launching back in, okay. I believe, 2012. And I think the comment was like, what, like, what's a Wii U? Or like... Getting it was like, oh, is this a new week? Like it was, you know, someone very high profile. So what do you guys want for Christmas? You want a Wii game? Wii uh, what's a Wii U? It's a new, it's a new version of a Wii. That sounds cool. Didn't know anything about that. For the record, Michelle Obama is a treasure and uh, nobody knows what the Wii is to this day. So uh, I get it. Um, and of course, it's much bigger fish to fry than uh, the the Wii U necessarily, but the Wii U did get fried uh, repeatedly <laughs> throughout its life, and it was just like an like very clear from the outset they had totally missed the mark on the messaging. And I feel like for the Switch and the Switch Lite, it's, it's very clear. Like, oh yeah, they're they very much this, like this is a Joy-Con. This uh -huh. does not fit. The Joy-Con floats away. Here is a TV. It does not talk to it. We are going to leave this TV alone. Like, yep. Uh, here's but a door. You go on. through these. Like, it's very. It was very very. Uh, straight to the point, and then it was just a lot of you know attractive teens uh, for the rest of the video. Um, 
Yeah, they but, they, they yeah, really ahead. devoted a lot of uh, screen time to to kind of demonstrating how the things mm-hmm. were different, and I think that's kind of a product of the naming. Um, of I mean, this is a switch. I mean, how many people do we think are going to buy this device, thinking this thing connects to their television? Um, I, I mean, yeah. it, because Switch is in the name, the Joy-Con logo is literally smacked on the back of this thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's going to be interesting to see how this works. Of course, it's yeah, going to still funny. sell really well. I never really, really well. thought of the Switch logo as being made up of the Joy-Con. But you're, I mean, of course it is. You're absolutely yeah. right. The, um, yeah, it's funny because for me, I hadn't thought of that at all. I just think about, you know, this is a form factor that's cheaper. It does seem like right. great for kids or for families that maybe they already have a Switch, but their kids want to switch. There's big yeah. games coming out this year. It's the perfect option, especially if they're, you know, they talked about um, in other reports, trying to, you know, upgrade or convert users of the 3DS onto it. Um but yeah, it's like how you can easily imagine this scenario where it's like a kid's like, hey, I really want this Nintendo Switch for Christmas or what have you. They've played it at a friend's house. They played it all together. And the parent's like, OK, sees this new SKU, this attractive box. I'm sure it'll be, you know, up on all the Black Friday ads. I'm sure it'll be, you know, headlining the, the Target Weekly ad, oh, things yeah. like that. Toys R Us, RIP. Um, but, <laughs> but I'm sure you'd walk in, you'd buy the, you know, this new colorful thing and then you know, perhaps have a little bit of confusion. Although I have to think like, I'm sure for many parents, that would be a risk they're willing to take. Like the idea of like, oh, my TV is like, our family's TV is not going to be monopolized by like these, you know, games. <laughs> device, yeah. is probably very attractive. So yeah. worst case scenario, they're, you know, reduced to, I think, um, you know, when we think about just the gaming landscape now for young people, uh, the, of course, the phones, you know, is so much of it. I've, I've been playing a lot of Pokemon Go. We were just talking about it, Matt. Mm-hmm. And but last night I had a nice time myself and a group of friends, my girlfriend, and then a couple of others. We went on a, a walk and played some Pokemon Go. It was, it was late. And we they took one of my uh, sets of friends. They took their daughter in the stroller as we were going. It was kind of a longer walk, and you know she occupied herself for a small portion of it, also with you know with a electronic device or a tablet or those are the things they used to play. So probably. You know, I don't think they ever think like, oh, I really want to get this up necessarily on the TV. You know, yeah. there's the TV right in their hands. I can interact with it. I'm sure, you know, even now using like Apple TV feels like a step behind using my phone. It's so much easier to do everything on my phone. Um, yeah. and, you know, having a personal have, touchscreen like that is probably very obvious, not as big a confusion as we think. Yeah, not my the my partner has a couple of um, cousins in town and their kids, they have a switch and they primarily play it handheld. I mean, they are glued mm-hmm. to that thing handheld and they're like eight you know seven eight nine years old uh and that's kind of around the the age that i think that are using these devices primarily now i know i know you use it handheld a lot um yeah probably I'm pretty 90 of the time yeah i'm more 50 50 um but i want a handheld device and so this thing i don't think it's going to be as confusing right it's not the wii to the wii u and i definitely think there's going to be plenty of of um specialists and sales reps who are all going to be in there saying, nope, this is what this is. Right. You know, or Nintendo's branding is going to be very specific about it. You probably, if you've already gone on their website, you can see they even have a whole infographic of like oh, really? all the things checked off for the Switch original and then the Switch Lite. And it's basically handheld mode is highlighted and like the other five boxes aren't. <laughs> yeah, that's um, interesting. That's funny. I, um, yeah, I think it's going to be obvious. I think they've made it as clear as it could be for something like this. Um, what I want to ask, ask you, Matt, is what features are you most surprised are removed? We speculated on this a couple months ago. There was like, yeah. the you know, Bloomberg report. There's the Wall Street Journal report from Japan. And um, so are there any that stand out to you, the big differences? We know, like you had said, no detachable Joy-Con cannot be mm-hmm. docked. No yeah. HD rumble does not have yeah. the IR functionality of the Joy-Con. Um, yeah. Smaller screen. But really, those are the the big ones. That's the big ones. I mean, truth, truthfully, the the I think for me to answer that question, it's like docking. I would I would love to see. I don't understand if it's like a function of the port that they took out, or if it's still possible through a firmware update. Um, I understand why it's not happening. Like I understand like why it's it's not going to be a thing. Obviously, like for a hundred dollars more, that's that's a, a huge bargain. You're getting a lot more. For the original switch for another hundred bucks you're getting a dock hdmi cable um the joy con uh what else comes in, in that package uh oh the little the switch grip thing mm. so yes, you're getting a precious piece of plastic but you do get <laughs> yeah you do get a lot more i mean definitely if that's your goal the val it, i think the value of the original switch is clear that's what you want right. if you have more than one person who wants to play with it 
But otherwise, this is a great option. We talked about a lot. My sister loves Animal Crossing. This would be great for her, especially if there's a bundle. We'll mm-hmm. talk about that later. But um, yeah, I do think it's like, an, this is like definitely the essentials. You know, dock removed. We saw that skew in Japan. This is what that is. I agree with you. It does seem strange if the chipset is the exact same, that all of a sudden it can't be docked. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I heard some speculating on Nintendo uh, voice chat that maybe it was like a ventilation thing that if they overclock right. uh, as they do to, to output at the higher resolution in dock it, mode, yeah, which it does. In the maybe dock, there aren't yeah. as many vents. Maybe some of the fans are removed for the smaller size. Um, but it does seem a little strange. Also, when you think about, so you could, in theory, you could still play Labo games, I believe, with this that allowed the detached Joy-Con. If the Labo, if this still fit. Would that work? I guess it probably not. Like no, because I mean, this won't. Well, I mean, depending on the labo, like I think even on like the VR shooter, it, maybe you could just stuff it in there and then. Yeah, like the V, it won't fit perfectly as a screen because it's a smaller screen. No, so that's going to be an no. issue. So I guess basically just across the board, no, unless yeah. But you can but use Joy-Con put... with this device, right? And you can. If they, I don't know if they said you could use a Pro controller with it, but they said at yeah, least you, you can, can use you Joy. Can, the okay, that. so Imagine, so so now you have now you have that. But, but it let me doesn't ask you like this. stand up. In what scenario, <laughs> the more I think about this, like the stranger this device is, in what scenario are you going to use a pro controller with right. this thing? Because you can no. never, unless you prop it up against like some books. Exa- exactly. Well, people are going to no buy stand. stuff. There's no stand. But I think if you're playing Super Smash Brothers. Well, are you, you ever want... going to play local one screen multiplayer on this screen? No. Like, no. No, you no, never no. Are. You're, you're not going to, but. Uh, what if you want to play Splatoon like they did in the original trailer for the Switch? But you had to you know? <laughs> take this thing, prop it up against something. Right, yeah. You and now it's going to be just further from you. <laughs> my on point, this my tiny point screen. Being is, it, this, this thing seems like it could have been a pretty cool, like... Uh, I mean, this, the Switch already is, but I just imagine just bringing this thing to a friend's house or dropping it on, just plugging a USB into it just to connect it to a monitor and pull out your Pro Controller. Like, that. that's really cool how much more modular it is than the original mm-hmm. switch but the virtual switch is still really modular like that's what it's good. for yeah right. so so this really is like hey we wanted to make it a more accessible uh yeah. switch for the broader market we know a lot of people still have 3ds's who haven't came over people who just love pokemon or animal crossing right. whatever those games are like Guilty. fire emblem fans right who haven't just bought it yet and this is perfect and then people like you and me who absolutely Just want this device. <laughs> for sure. I know. Because we wanted podcast with Andrew and Danny. We couldn't find time to get all of us together. I know Danny is like kind of lukewarm on it. Andrew's like not into it. And honestly, like it makes sense. I love Nintendo hardware. Matt, you do too. We've talked mm-hmm. so much about it. Um, you know, early on in our, this podcast, I was, you know, trying to convince you to get the new Nintendo 2DS XL, uh, which I believe successfully I did. And yes. just like two months ago, I bought the uh, DSi XL, DSi, mind you. And I took it to Hawaii and played Dragon Quest V the whole time. And it was amazing and lovely. But, um, you know, I just love just getting that new toy. You know, I love the, seeing the packaging and the way it comes out of the box. And it's so, you know, beautiful and fun. And I can't wait for this thing. I'm very excited about it. But I do wonder, like, so I have multiple 3DSs, okay? And, um, and so when I want to switch between them, it, I have to do the transfer process on the 3DS, which is not yeah. easy. And you, the, you can only do it once a week and the Pikmin come, they take everything. It takes like, you know, 20 minutes. Um, you know, it's gotten to the point where it's like, I have, there was a while there where I was switching it a lot, just like for fun. Like I get a new faceplate, use a small one. I would like enjoy, I wanted the 3d. I'd use my Nintendo 3ds uh, XL with Samus on it. I'd want like, my favorite one is the 2DS XL for sure, so I use that most of the time. But, you know, I'd move between them, but it was really cumbersome. It's a lot easier to do the transfer process on this one, um, on the Switch, but it's still yeah, not With perfect. the online service, yeah. But, there, yeah. but here's the big caveat. So, mm. um, okay, so we kind of had four topics for the show. One was just info, which we've uh, basically hit. This, this next one is who is this really for? And we're going to talk about bundles and maybe what we see in the future. But So let's yeah. move on a little bit into the caveat. So the... Most obvious thing is it's for the kids who had a 3DS and the parents want to buy them one. And I think it's perfect for that. I also think it's smart that this is the first revision to come out because if they had done like a more substantial, like, you know, with Switch Pro yeah. and yeah. then the other one, this would feel like a big back step. I'm sure if we ever do get Switch Pro, what I'm skeptical of, but if we ever were to get one, um, you know, they would want the guts of this one to be as cheap as possible because that's the whole point. And it was $200. Right. It's probably uh, more durable just given that form there aren't any things going to break off you know my joy con i've had two joy con break and i'm extremely careful i'm you know of course never drop the switch it's always in a carrying case and just from normal use two of my joy con eventually have 
gone kaput. So to have fewer things that can, you know, mine broke at the hinges, yeah. for example, and, and yeah, weird. stick, which is not going to be trick, but if you look on the Reddit, for what it's worth, a lot of people at this point are starting to experience the hardware failure of the Joy-Con. Um, oh, not so, me yet. Like, on my left one, it just starts to drift on the analog well, you're, stick. You're playing a lot more handheld. Yeah, I know that drifts yeah. a, a, an issue. The left um, one drifts, and my right, I had a right Joy-Con that the hinge, when you snap on, it would just slide off. So just like the normal wear from that eventually right. slid off. Um, and then but, one thing, well, the one thing we didn't bring up was that the the D pad is implemented. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's back. Huge. It, That's actually huge. I always forget yeah. about that. That alone is makes it worth it for me because yeah. I use that D pad as much as I can. The yeah. the currently it's the buttons, of course, on the Switch. But like I loved Hollow Knight last year. Played the entire thing like that. And yeah. then when I had to fight the final bosses and the DLC bosses of Hollow Knight, which were more challenging um, for already a hard game, I used my Pro controller because I wanted the D pad, the true D pad. But everything yeah. else, I did use the buttons. Even like. Any ob- anytime I can use the digital input for any game, I was playing Crash Team Racing on PlayStation with a good friend. Um, I'll play it with the D pad. Like I, I like the responsiveness always. Whenever I can choose that, especially for a game where you're moving, you know, within two planes. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, and so for this, uh, I'm totally excited about that D pad. Love that idea. I do think for like the what it's for category. So one of the 3DS switches I made was I had the uh, new 3DS XL. And then I went for a new 3DS non-XL, which we got later, of course, because Japan was like, oh, America's only going to want the XL. They're not going to want these, this tiny one. Oh, so yeah. they held off on a release. And then when they finally did, it was like the new thing. I was like, well, the faceplates are cool. And I ended up getting it. But I remember opening that thing up and right away being like, wow, the screen is so much smaller. And it's yeah. kind of the same phenomenon with the phones. Like, Matt, you and I, you upgraded from a standard size or a formerly standard size from iPhone the, too. From the SE, actually. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. pretty small, all, you know, but everything's relative there. But to the 10R, you know, which is definitely a, a sizable phone in comparison. Um, and I remember just like, even that difference was felt massive. You know, it feels like such, and then when you go back, it's like tiny. It's really hard to, you get so used to engaging with this thing so many times a day that when you make that switch, it's more jarring than you expect. Yeah. I wonder how much smaller... Going from above six inch screen to the uh, the five for the Switch Lite is going to shake people. I think yeah, it's going to be gonna more like... jarring than people think it's going to be. Well, I think it's that's actually something that came up. I was interested in about because apparently a lot of the uh, media folks who got hands on got to play Zelda. I remember when I first picked it up and I first had the Switch. I was like, oh my god, this is so difficult. Like these mm-hmm. these letters are really tiny um right. I, I can't imagine how much smaller they're going to be on even an even smaller screen um or at least the real estate being smaller however all the other games i play you got to think that it'll be a little more crisp um yes for know, sure and that was age, actually so. why i ended up getting the three nintendo uh new 3ds back in the day new nintendo 3ds God, why is it so hard i've spent so much time with those dear friends the <laughs> like because people were like hey this is actually like the best resolution as far as any of the screens because the pixel quality of the xl is the same as the smaller one and so it was like you actually have the, the crispest screen when it's a little smaller but in actuality the bigger screen is just kind of always nicer even when you lose a little bit of that density because just yeah. having a larger play area is just nice but um yeah. the i do wonder about that um so let's talk about the caveat really fast for the ha- sure. who, this, who is this for. So it's easier now because you can have two switches even now and make one your primary console and one your other console. And you could, as long as you're connected to a switch online, you can move your saves onto the other one and then have them there. Um, but it does raise some interesting questions like, okay, so for Pokemon, right? Yeah. Pokemon is not a game that can use the cloud saves. So neither is like Dark Souls, neither is... Crash Team Racing for whatever reason. So there's a few of these games. So you basically have to do the transfer process to move it onto your Switch Mini at, or Lite, excuse me, and then upload all of the saves from there to the cloud and then pull them back onto the original Switch if you wanted to use this Go as back. like your Pokemon machine. Yeah, which is which I don't, which I think that's the most interesting thing, right? It's like, this is the first one on a console. I want to be able to play this on my TV as well. Um, for sure at, at least with Pokemon. but of course mainly i want it on the go just because of the nature of like the grinding and the catching oh but yeah. yes you want both for sure right like, exactly these things, you want both uh, tr- truthfully when i think about getting this because you and i are both thinking about this as a secondary device it's it's not primarily meant for us however nintendo knows they can cash in on people like yeah, us well, we're gonna get a second time for sure <laughs> and, a, and a third mm-hmm. and a fourth with every right. iteration of this thing that might come out with right. special colors on it which we could talk about in the future but i I, 
I got to imagine they're going to hopefully make this process easier to use this thing as a secondary device. Otherwise, I'm only going to basically use it to play indie games, like games that yeah. don't take very long, that I really want to put time in. I want to play while I'm in bed. Um, and when I travel, you know, I kind of like these. I love kind of just trudging through some of those like smaller, you know, you know, eight hour games. Or I know. Yeah. Th- I think because of that, um, and I think it's well said, it does make this like, I'm excited because it's a Nintendo toy. It's a piece of hardware. And it yeah. is kind of this little curioso of like, wow, what did Nintendo do now? What's this like fun little thing to yeah. explore and play around with? But there is a level where, yeah, like having a D-pad makes sense for a lot of, of these smaller budget games that are often 2D. And, um, you know, that would be beautiful for that. But you do wonder, is it going to be a hassle when it comes really to the games that don't support the cloud? Yeah. And I got it. Yeah. I really don't. I mean, knowing Nintendo, I just don't think they're going to do anything to make it any easier. So I wonder yeah. how how painful is it going to be? Because if I were to have both of these, which I do intend to, like the original and this, uh, I don't. I imagine playing the Switch Lite, particularly because it's the new one. I see myself playing it more. Yeah. Like I already play it largely handheld and I see using the other one as like, uh, you know, for the games. And of course, and I want to have that home experience or I have people over. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Book I really see up, Switch Lite games. happening yeah. most of the time. So it isn't really a big deal. I like the D-pad. I like a longer battery. Um, those are important selling points. But it, yeah, I, I wonder if it's a subtle improve. It's a subtle improvement in those ways. I don't think the detachable Joy-Con or whatever is a big issue. Uh, because really the number of times I'm doing that for multiplayer for someone like locally right there is so rare. You know, yeah. I have yeah. multiple pro controllers and the GameCube controllers at home. So I'm rarely handing somebody, you know, no one wants to play with just one Joy-Con if they can yeah. avoid it. So, um, but really it's going to be, will Nintendo's transfer process be more cumbersome than it is fun to enjoy these subtle, yeah. I feel like improvements with the Switch Lite. So it should be interesting to see because it's gonna, yeah, it's going to make owning this as a secondary console not as fun right um because honest truthfully i dream of the day where nintendo i mean almost like their apple machines right where you know you're the nintendo cloud is like the iCloud, where mm-hmm. you know you, you save something and your other device automatically has access to that save data and you can download it pretty quickly and then boom yeah exactly you know? but and i think we're getting closer this switch is much better than the 3ds was i mean it's night and day in yeah. that regard it it's a snappy UI. You know, this is another time where I'm glad we do not have Amiiverse and things on the Switch <laughs> or a lot yeah. of flair even. Like, yeah. I do hope there are themes, but I hope they're not like the Badge Arcade on 3DS, which is so fun and cool and quirky and Nintendo, and I loved it. But you got to a point where it's like, there's so much going on. There were yeah, so all these things that fluff. slowly did. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of fluff. It slows everything down. And if I'm going to be transferring between these two units, um, I want it to be snappy. And the Switch yeah. is already snappy. And so, you know, that's what I want to prioritize. But um it does make you think so let's talk really fast about the colors matt right i'm gonna go for the yellow i think it's like a fun color i it seems and when i look them all my sister said you know i think this i was like showing it to my mom and sister because i always appreciate their advice and (laughs) i was like um what do you guys think on this one especially when i'm between things and they're like they're like you know we can tell the the yellow is bringing you the most joy so i go for the yellow and i was like okay i'm gonna do the yellow um (laughs) but you know i recently got that dsi excel i went for the Strange wine red. Love that mm-hmm. weird color. Um, what are you intending to do? So when we talked, I mean, initially watching the video, I was like, oh, wow, the turquoise looks really good. And then I thought more about it. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't want anything flashy. I, I'm kind of the, the gray looks nice enough. I think it looks sleek. Um, it's hard to tell what these are legitimately going to look like on For the sure. video. And then the photos slash digital renderings, really, of what they are. Um, yeah they kind of make them pop a little bit more than they might. And truth, mm-hmm. truthfully, I hope that they're a little, a little more Softer. subdued. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Like we've talked about this in the past, but like, it's always the way Nintendo does their like, handhelds, right? It like kind of starts yeah. with these strange colors and then they like roll out colors. You might be more interested in, cause I want you to of course, double dip like for the then D- Nintendo DS Lite, probably the best Nintendo uh, handheld redesign besides uh, probably the Game Boy Advance SP since it introduced so many new things for that line. But Uh the light was like such a perfect distillation of all the changes that need to be made back for the Nintendo DS. It was only white, you know, then it got black better part of a year later and other colors were so fun. And then I saw the black and I was like, oh, I need it versus like we talked about this before, but the PSP came in black. The white one eventually came out. I was like, I need that one. Like, um, you know, they're restrained of the colors 
uh, for the Nintendo 3DS XL, I remember when it was the, it was like the blue and the red, you know, but I would have liked just black. Um, yeah. But I got the blue and I, I ultimately felt like it was a nicer, softer blue and less of like a really harsh metallic blue that it had looked like in the renders. Yeah. Um, and I wonder how these will kind of shape out too. But our colors right now are yellow, turquoise, and the gray. It's a light yeah. gray. And there's also all the buttons on those are white. Yeah, and there's also oh. a bundle for Pokemon that comes out in November. That is kind of an off-white that features and I kind like of raspberry that. and blueberry colored. I like the way that looks. Uh, I'm, 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 I never have gotten like a game specific device, um, especially with Pokemon. Like, I don't need like the etchings in the back, but like the way the color stands out, I almost wish they would have just come out with like uh, they had a gray, maybe an off-white one with like yeah, gray. the off-white. I would have done like. That right. was like a cool color. I yeah. I agree. I don't I don't love like the buttons the, necessarily. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about the console specific ones, um, I do have three S ones like that, but is when I play something else on it, it feels like a kind of a mismatch. Like <laughs> yeah, it definitely I, does. You know, I'm like I'm oh, it's like I'm playing Zelda, but it's Pokemon themed. It's like uh, it's like so much brand at once. I don't know. Yeah. I, I like just like the ones that are like this is the stock one, and then you can add personality to it, which was fu- was fun about the place, the face plates, and it's fun about themes on 3ds. Like, right. hey, here's a, you can kind of make it whatever. Um, but it even feels wrong for like my Samus one, the Metroid one, 3ds to then have like open it up and like all of a sudden here is the Zelda theme or like a Splatoon theme. It's like uh, it doesn't really yeah. fit. But um, yeah. but that said, I do like that color a lot. And if there were like a um, like a really fun yellow like kind of like this yellow maybe deeper yellow that had like some type of pikachu that a lot of the other handhelds have featured like cheeks and eyes or something i would probably go for that for like a big bold color i, I like i yeah. like those two um but i will probably opt for yellow yeah I, I will probably opt for the gray unless unless for whatever reason i don't get a an opportunity to pre-order one and then i'm kind of stuck until it comes out um and i get to see the turquoise ahead of time like that would be the only way like I would get a trick. I have to see it in hand first before I buy it. And I'm definitely going to pre-order it before I ever see one of these in person. For so sure. I'm, I'm definitely going to go for that. Like for the most part, Nintendo stock things as of late have been pretty like there hasn't yeah. been a ton of Amiibo style or even like, no, but I am a like little worried. Switch. I mean, the switch, obviously when the switch first came out, it was a hot item, right? You did not right. get on the, on board early. You were waiting a few months and, uh, because they announced it, and the F, with the FCC, uh, you know, not being uh, officially approved yet, and so nothing can be officially up for sale. Like mm-hmm. with that little caveat, and all, you know, basically North America, just like, oh my, God. I think just like it's creating a demand, uh, just because it's unavailable to pre-order. For sure, yet. it's fun. And I, right, I follow Warrior sixty four. I check all the time for my alerts. I get an alert. I'm like, oh, and I'm like, oh, Dragon Dogma, Dark Arisen. Like, I don't want that. <laughs> I want my yellow switch. Have you seen the official carrying case too? I have. It's nice. It's it looks really like nice. Definitely want that. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited for the pre order. Planning yellow for now. I just like the toy look of it. I like the fact that it'd be distinct from my switch, which is no matter what Joy-Con I have on there, largely gray. You know what? It actually, I think it looks better than the current really? uh, model. Like, I just think it. It looks sleeker, and I hope that if there is, and we can get into this a little bit more, but if there is a Switch Pro or a redesign of the Switch in the future, that like they, like the the core console, the screen, you know, it's it kind of feels like uh, a cheap third party tablet that you know, like I know. like it without feels, the Joy Cons on it. Yeah, not trying it to like did, dunk on, but like it does feel like no. you know. I play a lot of Pokemon Go, already talked about on the show. And a lot of times, those of us out there who are passionate have like a baby account. We have like a second thing that we also have an account on to catch, like let's say there's Pokemon out there, catch it twice, catch it on yours and the second account that you've made. That's very that's a high level play thing. People go to a raid with two accounts. I have yeah. an iPad that has cell data on it. I take it to accounts and use a second one. I often, I'll beam in one of my friends. I have like their logins and I'll, you know, be like, mm-hmm. hey. In any event, a lot of these people will use like, um, you know, things that are like kind of Kindle fire adjacent or Samsung tablets or what have you that are just like, um, you know, they're not always, you know, not always beautiful. They're very rectangular and harsh looking. And they, you know, it, and the switch has that look like it a bit, especially when the joy con are not on it. Like it is like, you know, it can use a little bit of a vamp, a little, a little yeah. revamp on it. But, uh, yeah, I do. I know. And that, that we should ne- on the next episode, talk a little bit about what we'd like to see out of now that we know kind of where Nintendo's going now. Do we think another one's possible? Right. And 
if so, what are the big things? Because I think this kind of, um, just to close the show out, I think like it's an exciting announcement. Totally excited for this thing. Assuming the transfer process is not hideous, I am like looking forward to playing with this as my handheld device. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, at the very least, just seeing you know having the fun of having it come out and having this little toy. But I think like the it does signal to me, hey, this is Nintendo making a more industry standard decision. Do the light console redesign, whether it's Xbox 360 to Xbox 360. You know, uh, they had like the S model, the the Xbox One S, uh, the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4 Lite, the PS3 had a two light, the Nintendo yeah. DS to light. It's more in that vein of the Nintendo DS than it is 3DS, which went immediately to the XL, which was surprising. And yeah. then we had, you know, the new Nintendo DS, which got confusing. Um, or the Wii to the Wii U, where you weren't really sure. This is like very by the book. And if we looked at these other things, you know, we had the Xbox One S, obviously Microsoft, but then what did we get later? Xbox One X, the more powerful. Yeah. PlayStation 4. Yeah. There was a slim unit that came out about the same time as PS4 Pro. Like, it this is nice. I, I, I think they, they're they building their family of systems over again um, phase, and phasing out the old family. And that like th- this is very much a part of it. I mean, they they now they have a handheld device again, a upgraded handheld device for a company who's done nothing but own the handheld market, you know, right. and and technically uh, you can I guess you can call the switch that. And yes, they're like supporting the 3DS. But really, this is going to this is going to take that space for them. And now it'll be interesting to see moving forward is Nintendo trying to compete with the 2020 releases of the upcoming consoles. Are they going to just keep their two tiered system or is there going to be a third pillar, which I mean, not the phone and not all that crap, but like, will there be a upgraded device for hopefully what they're realizing? A lot of a lot of hardcore gamers who own their system and are are asking for these types of things. And I think that would really balance out their their family of consoles. I agree too. I think we've seen the Switch is getting so many ports, whether it's Mortal Kombat 11 or Crash or um, even indie games where they're you're thinking about like or Bloodstained is the big right. one recently where it's like I really want to play Bloodstained. I was playing to get it on Switch. It's not a good port on the Switch, so it's like I'll get it on PlayStation. But I really wish I could play this handheld game it, just like my Castlevania games on Nintendo DS that I adored and are amongst my favorite games yeah. ever. And the I would love an upgraded Switch. I hope they do that, but let's talk about it a little next time what we'd like to see out of it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Austin's going to keep me posted about when this thing drops for pre-orders because I can't wait. Ultimately, as we, as we said right when it released, when I uh, messaged you and, and Danny in the morning, um, definitely want this thing. And the reason I want it is because I just want something to throw around wherever I go. Um, it's a very just portable device mm-hmm. uh, version of my Switch. I love miniature tech right exactly or, it's like, like, like no matter what way i try to justify this thing i really can't do it it's really just like i love the <laughs> right. miniature tech i'm yeah. excited for the toy can't wait to, I, I see that box and i'm like i love that fun box like <laughs> that's i just can't i love it when nintendo has a new little design and it's yeah. like a fun li- you know lineage of all their handhelds which is like you said matt they've owned this space and their yeah. redesigns have always been since the game boy pocket have always been you know really fun distillations of what was good about the thing that has you know very minor tweaks hardware wise but right. just comes in a form factor that's a little more pleasing this is exactly that we both adore the switch it's very exciting yeah do we need it absolutely not but we're getting one right and, and we i can't will wait show it to you exactly and i can't wait for there to be like a fun bundle months later with the samus on the back or whatever and i'll <laughs> you know get a couple all right in any event <laughs> thank you so much for joining us on another nintendo podcast episode 41 please check us out on youtube and follow us on the podcast app of your choosing it might take some searching but you'll find it maybe <laughs> uh this has been austin cummings and i've been joined by matt, matt schultz, schultz. Uh, hey be well and we'll see you at another nintendo podcast <laughs>